Shalom family. Baruch Hashem Yah, Bahashem Yehushua. Baruch Hashem Yehushua. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, preparing for the last days. Um, we're coming out of Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verses 11 through 18. Um, and we are clearly living in the last days. The wickedness that we see around us is just a sign for us to know what's actually going on. Um, but Ephesians 6 uh, is very important to uh, obeying Yah and being prepared uh, for uh, the times we're in and the times to come. And uh, we have to look at this the right way. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about all the things that are happening around us that they can see, but not truly understanding that uh, there is a greater evil uh, that is behind the scenes that has always been here. Um, it's just that we are approaching the time where uh, the iniquities are full and the wrath of Yah is, uh, is near at hand. But we have to be prepared spiritually because the things that we are fighting against are spiritual. And these scriptures, uh, Ephesians 6, 11 through 18, teach us that the preparation is completely spiritual. Okay? Uh, anything you do uh, physically or, or materially um, won't matter if the spiritual preparation is not in place. Because ultimately this is how we're going to be delivered on a spiritual level. This is where all of the uh, schemes come from, all of the wickedness. It's a spiritual attack upon us in these last days. And we have to look at it the right way so we can be prepared correctly according to the scripture. Okay, so I'm going to start reading uh, Ephesians 6, uh, verse 11 through 18. Verse 11, put on the complete armor of Elohim for you to have power to stand against the schemes of the devil. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual matters and wickedness in the heavenlies. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim so that you have power to withstand in the wicked day and having done all stand. Okay, so we see these first three verses we're looking at that in order to stand against the schemes of the devil, because there are many schemes okay, against the people of Yah against uh, in fact mankind to, to totally destroy everyone um, and to have them spiritually uh, out of line with the scriptures specifically to uh, the Israelites whom Yah has chosen who are scattered throughout the earth who are currently uh, under the ban or under uh, punishment of disobedience the whole point being in these last days for us to turn back to Yah and He is waking us up and calling us and we have to accept the call through the salvation of Yah which is Yehushua HaMashiach um, we have to be born again to live a life that is set apart, that is holy, that is refraining from sin, that is denying sin in the flesh. And the scripture teaches us so that we can be acceptable to God. Um, these scriptures basically detail how we get there, what we do. Um, and people are looking at all this material stuff and not understanding the, the war is a spiritual one. Okay? There are many things that have been uncovered as far as plans and schemes and um, things that are that are coming or things that are happening but if we look at it on the spiritual side we have always uh, been under a, a martial law so to speak spiritually um, there have always been FEMA camps or uh, internment camps spiritually you know, internment camps almost on every corner in the black community okay that uh whole point is to spiritually lock us up, uh, spiritually have us um, starving. So the scarcity of spiritual food 
is more dire and more serious than the scarcity of physical food, okay? And spiritually, uh, there isn't much food to go around because there's not much truth out here. Um, but as the scriptures teach us in Psalm 37, that in scarcity of food, we will be satisfied. This is what Yah teaches us. And he teaches us this for a reason, because he understands that in the last days, spiritually, there will be a famine. Okay, there'll be a famine of faith, a famine of the truth, a famine of righteousness. And these are the things uh, that are being uh, perpetrated against us, and have always been perpetrated against us. Uh, any manifestations we see uh, physically uh, in the current time uh, is only an effect and not a cause. The cause of the spiritual uh, famine, spiritual uh, martial law, so to speak, or spiritual uh, taking away of our weapons. That spiritually these things are occurring and you've seen some physical manifestations of them, but it's a spiritual reality we have to look at that we are being disarmed spiritually. Okay? Through these uh, internment camps that teach error and wickedness and continue to allow people to live this way and think they're okay. This is the wickedness we're fighting against. So when we look at these scriptures here, it says all the schemes of the devil, we can stand against them with the complete armor of Elohim. And we have to take this armor up so that we can withstand in that wicked day. Okay? And we're in that wicked day now. We can't look at a day as just one, one day. This is a span of time. Um, this could be thousands of years. This is not just a literal day. We are in a meaning a time. Okay? Uh, and let's look at uh, verse 14. Stand then, having girded your waist with truth. See, this is how we're going to fight against uh, all of this uh, wickedness. This is how we're going to fight against this so-called new world order. You know, we keep hearing this phrase, but it's always been around, okay? It was, uh, the devil was trying to implement it back in the days of Noah. And of course, the Most High destroyed everything but Noah and his family, all the people. So, you know, we're, we're back in that time again, but we have to look at and understand this is the spiritual reality we're looking at here. So we need truth. We don't have the truth. See, we're being, uh, the truth is being stolen from us. The truth is being hidden from us. The truth of who we are, the truth of what the scriptures want us to and instruct us to do. The truth of who the Father is and who the Son is. And how we're supposed to live for Him. So, uh, we have to understand that when there is no truth, then you have a famine. You have scarcity of food. Okay? You don't have your weapons. Let's keep going. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So this is a breastplate, this righteousness. Right living, doing right. Living uh, set apart. Okay? Not being filled with hatred. And, and, and because the scriptures say, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And if you walk around with hate in your heart, you will not enter the kingdom. Okay? All of this hateful talk, uh, all this hateful behavior. Uh, we are not to take any revenge on anybody. Because the Most High fights for his people. He says vengeance belongs to him. This is what the scripture teaches us. So the breastplate of righteousness. And then you got to fit your feet with the preparation of the good news, of peace. Oh, the scripture, scriptures, the gospel, the good news, the entire Bible. You know, you got people wanting to throw away portions of it, you want to take what they deem, uh, I guess, uh, valid. A lot of people want to throw away the New Testament, but then they try to use the New Testament to prove that the New Testament is to be thrown away. What are you reading it for? You trying to use it to prove something? Um, the whole point is that the Bible in its totality is complete. Um, there, is, there are apocryphal books and other things that we read that the Ruach HaKodesh leaves us and guys us no righteousness, but we can't throw away our book and our writings okay because we're talking about our people um, we're talking about the covenants that 
who are neighborless people, and we are living in, and we are, are, are under the renewed covenant. Those who have went into that covenant through repentance, because Yah sent His salvation through His Son Yahushua. And in the apocryphal books in the Old Testament, Yahushua is there. But if you don't have the spiritual eye and the wisdom and understanding, you will not see him. And that is not by chance. That is by design. That is why the scripture says, what is the father's son, what is the son's? The father's name, what is the son's name, if you know it. If you can't tell, and you have to study to show yourself a proof, you have to want to know. Okay? Uh, being under the ban and the punishment we are under, we have to want to be restored back to Yah and desire, desire wisdom and understanding. And then Most High will deliver this to us. So we have to pray for wisdom and understanding of His Word. Okay, so you got to be prepared. Your feet got to be prepared with the good news. If you're not reading and understanding Scripture, you're not prepared. If you understand the Scripture uh, in error, if somebody's lying to you, telling you, sinful life is something you can't avoid it's just the way things are and lying to you about the savior with a fake name and an idolatrous image well then you know you're not prepared verse 16 above all having taken up the shield of belief with which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one hmm? it's verse 16 having that faith faith in the word we have to be in truth. Okay? We have to have righteousness. You understand the truth, you understand you have to repent, be born again. That you have to die to sin. That the old man has to uh, be destroyed. That you have to present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, as the scripture teaches us, so that Yah will be pleased with you. Okay? Um, you have to believe all this. You have to have faith. <laughs> Even if you're, you're, you're Torah only, you still understand you have to have faith. Because wasn't that our problem? We didn't even have enough faith to believe we can go into the land. Go into the promised land. We couldn't even take it because they were too big. They were giants. We were like grasshoppers. They were going to eat us. Our children were going to be a prey to them. Unbelief. That's why we were dying in the wilderness. That's why we wound up under the ban, under the punishment. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68. Because of unbelief okay so you have to have faith and that's very important and that faith opens the door to all kinds of things we have knowledge and understanding of what we need to do and in these last days it's very important we have to look at everything people um, are talking about in a spiritual sense the disarming is going to be spiritual Okay, so how are we being disarmed? Again, we don't have the truth. We don't have the truth. And let's look at verse 17. It says, taking also the helmet of deliverance. This is our deliverance, huh? You have to be born again, delivered from sin, worldly living, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim. So that weapon, that sword of the Spirit, which is his word, being taken from us, it's being perverted, it's being corrupted, and uh, you know people are lying on the truth, so to speak, and disarming us spiritually. So we're not one with the truth. We don't have a breastplate of righteousness because nobody's living a set apart life. We're in these uh, FEMA camps on every corner in the black neighborhood, huh? And uh, we are not having any type of faith, except for maybe the Most High pay some bills and give us a job. But no, no faith to live right. No faith to live a set up our life. A life pleasing to Him. When it comes our turn to do something for Yah, we fail. And, so, and try to back that up with the scriptures, which you cannot do. You find a few scriptures, you take them out of context, and you say, well, we can't live right. When the scripture is screaming at us to live a life pleasing to Yah, not to yield our bodies as instruments of unrighteousness, and to go and sin no more. So we have to understand. We've been disarmed spiritually. There is a scarcity of food spiritually. There are FEMA camps spiritually. Martial law is taking place on a spiritual level. 
okay? The law of the devil to block righteousness and to prevent the children of Israel from waking up, from waking up totally. Not just saying, oh, I, I'm an Israelite, but knowing I got to live a set apart life. I have to be able to teach others. I have to be able to, to bring all the nations who are called by Yah and accept the call under uh, the righteous uh, teachings of the scripture because that is our duty. That we are lawgivers, that we are supposed to be able to explain the Bible and teach others. The Israelite and the Gentile who was grafted in. And many don't believe that Gentiles are grafted in, but they don't want to read and go to Deuteronomy, where uh, the Most High gave Moses a song, and in the song, and this is the entire nation of Israel in the song, the Most High revealed that the Israelites would turn to idolatry and make him jealous through it so that he would go to a foolish people, a people who were no people. As uh, the Apocrypha does say, they were, they were not a people to me, they were like spittle. Um, yes, but the Most High searched out for them and called them because we rejected him. So, you know, you got to ask for wisdom on that. If you don't understand that, then I, I can't help you. If the whole nation of Israel, there was no northern and southern kingdom during this time, the Most High is saying, I'm going to reject you and turn to a foolish nation of people who are no people. So we can't be talking about the northern kingdom because there was no northern kingdom at this time. Anyway. But that's all part of trying to disarm us, huh? Disarm us from what the truth is. Have us out of line with Yah. So we be doing stuff and making it, making demands and, and waking up and then going to set terms on who can and cannot uh, read the Bible, who can and cannot actually accept uh, salvation, who can and cannot decide they want to serve Yah. That somehow you you going to dictate that. They just There's no way they're going to decide to serve Yah. And there are some people who aren't. There are vessels who dishonor. There are people who are never going to decide to serve Yah. Those oppressing us and desiring our destruction, they won't serve Yah. But we have to. We have to be teachers. We have to be lawgivers. We have to be examples. Examples of righteousness, not hatred. Examples of teaching the truth uh, out of a place of love and not screaming and hollering and, and trying to destroy people with our mouths. This is not what the scripture teaches. And this is all part of Babylon. This is all part of what we need to come out of, you see. Because, yes, there are plagues coming. There are plagues coming literally and, <laughs> and plagues coming spiritually. There are plagues coming upon Babylon. And we are called to come out of her. Okay? What the scripture teaches us is all part of being prepared. And all these scriptures all tied in together. Okay, verse 18. It says, praying at all times, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching in all perseverance and supplication for all the set apart ones. This is our duty. This is how we are prepared. This is how we stay armed up. Okay? Um, these scriptures teach us um, very valuable teachings here. That we are to be spiritually prepared for these last days. And uh, in Revelation 18, I'll just read a little bit of that, um, what we are to do and how important this is. Uh, Revelation verse 18, uh, chapter 18, teaches us that Babylon is fallen. And uh, we are instructed in verse 4, Scriptures teach us, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people lest you share in her sins, lest you receive of her plagues. This is what we need to be concerned about. Not uh, militarized police force or somebody walking down the streets keeping us in our homes. We need to worry about spiritually where we are. That the Most High will take care of us. That He will deliver us. That He will preserve us. That plagues are coming upon Babylon. And if you're not a part of Babylon, then you will not be a partaker of her sins and you will not receive of her plagues that's why the most high saying come out and we are at a point in time where we can come out of error we can come out of lies okay anybody telling you you can't do right we can say you know what that's not what the bible teaches 
I need to live a set apart righteous life. And through Yahushua, which is the salvation of Yah, I can do this. And I need to prepare myself. That's what we need to be doing in the Word, preparing ourselves spiritually. Seeking knowledge and understanding, wanting to know everything Yah has for us, uncovering all the things that He's teaching us. Because we've been cut off for so long, there's so many things we need to learn and continue to grow in knowledge and understanding and to teach others. And that should be our goal, that should be what we desire to do uh, in this life. So it's very important that we are prepared spiritually and that we have uh, the whole armor of Elohim. Hallelujah. And may Yah add a blessing to his word.